the Shia, may Allah guide them, may Allah guide them, okay, and may Allah bring them to the right understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. What they do is, they divorce everyone else for some strange reason. Only Ali, radiallahu anhu, and Fatima, and Hassan, and Hussein. So amazingly, some for some reason, the children of Hassan are not part of Ahlul Bayt. For some reason. And some of the children of Hussein are also not part of Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt to them are only those people who tow their line or who they claim are the Ahlul Bayt. For example, now when we go further, for example, Ali bin Abi Talib had 12 sons. Did you know that? Yes? Did you know that? He had 12 sons. Except, you know, um, for example, Muhammad bin Hanafiya. Does anyone know about him? Anyone? Have you heard of him? He was one of the sons of Ali bin Abi Talib, very active at that time, politically and, and religiously. He was very active in the first century. Then Ali bin Abi Talib had a son called Abu Bakr. He had a son called Uthman. He had a son called Umar. Did you know that? Yes? And then Hassan had children called Abu Bakr and Umar. Hussein had son, a son called Uthman. So now when we ask these questions to these people and some of our Shia brothers and sisters in humanity, they declare takfir of the Sahaba. They say all the Sahaba are kuffar except few. All the Sahaba are kuffar except few. And they are the names, they give the names, Miqdad ibn Aswad, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Salman al-Farsi, and there are few more. Except these people, all of them, 99% of the Sahaba are Kuffar. Okay? Abu Bakr, Ali, uh, sorry, Uthman, and Omar included. So now the point is, if that is the case, and if that was the Aqidah of Ali and Hassan and Hussein, why would you name your children Omar, Uthman, and Abu Bakr? So, and it doesn't stop there. According to their belief, Abu Bakr and Umar are the worst of the kuffar on the planet, ever lived. They are worse than shayateen. This can be found clearly in the writings. Okay, again this is not to spread hatred, this is to break this barrier between us and them so that we can talk to them and explain things to them. Okay, we are not blind to these realities. These realities exist. So purpose is not to spread hatred. This is a, the purpose of this talk is to have an academic view on this topic. Okay, this is what the belief is and this is in the books. And if that is the case, why would Abu Bakr or Umar and Uthman be loved by Hassan and Hussein so much that they would name the children after them? Now, how many of you would name your children Abu Lahab? Or Abu Jahl? Hmm? Anyone? Would you name your children uh, Kisra or Fir'aun? So would you name your children after these people? No. Why not? Because Ru'usul Kufr. These are the heads of Kufr. Yes? Likewise, our Shia brothers in humanity, they believe that Abu Bakr and Umar were Ru'usul Kufr. And if this was the Aqidah of Ali, Hassan and Hussain, who forced them to name the children? So they come back with an argument. They say, Umar, Uthman, Abu Bakr, these were standard Arabic names. So what's the, what's the problem? They named the children after these names. What's the problem? No, that is not true. That can be argued about Uthman and Umar. That, can, that argument can be put forward. But even if that's the case, why would you follow? Why Abu Jahl is an Arabic term. Abu Lahab, Fir'aun is an Arabic, is Arabized version of our Egyptian, an Egyptian word. Why don't you name your children Fir'aun? But even if we accept the argument, Abu Bakr was not an Arabic name known at that time. This was a kunia. And he was called Abu Bakr because he was the father of Bakr. Bakr means virgin. And the only wife the Prophet ﷺ married who was a virgin was Aisha. Is that clear? Yes? And this is why he was called Abu Bakr. So now, what do we do with this issue? So 
basically here the problem is that these brothers and sisters in humanity are simply not willing to listen. They need to go back to their sources and check whether this is true or not. If this is true, then what they believe in is not right. These people cannot be kuffar and the worst of kuffar for them to be, uh, you know, for, for, for them to be naming their children after these people. So, with an exception of few, Ahlul Bayt are only the children of uh, Hussein, and then from the children of Hussein, they pick and choose again. Okay, the only child to have survived from Hussein radiallahu anhu, who was uh, a survivor of Karbala, his name was Ali bin Hussein bin Ali. Who was he? Imam Zainul Abidin. Okay, he was known as Zainul Abidin, but his name was Ali bin Hussein. Okay, now he had sons. The elder one was Zaid bin Ali bin Hussein bin Ali. And then there was another one called Muhammad, who was younger than Zaid. Is that clear? Listen carefully. Are you listening? This is very important. This is history. Okay? Zaid was the son of Ali, who was also known as Zainul Abidin, who survived in the Battle of Karbala, who was a young boy at the time. And then he got married and he had children. One of his sons was Zaid. Okay? And then was Muhammad who is also known as Muhammad al-Baqir, who had a son called Ja'far. And Ja'far had a brother called Ismail. Okay? So now, by the way, from Hussein, the only Ahlul Bayt is um, Zainul Abidin, because he was the only one who survived. From Zainul Abidin, the only part of the family is Muhammad al-Baqir, not Zaid, who was the elder son. And he was the one who, who should have succeeded his father. Right or wrong? Yes? But you know why he was ex excommunicated from the family of the Prophet ﷺ? He was thrown out. No, you're not the family of the Prophet. We don't want to listen to you. You're not, you have nothing to do with us. So if we look at their criteria, it's very, very inclusive or exclusive. Very exclusive. Okay? Ahlul Bayt are the ones we say are Ahlul Bayt. Not what Allah and his messengers say or not the standard criteria because what is Ahlul Bayt? The family of the Prophet, right? And they say family of the Prophet is only Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussain. Fine, okay. Wives cannot be the family of the Prophet, even though the Quran is very clear. Fine, no problem. Okay. But even if that's true, is, is that true? Is that what they believe in? Because when you look at the children of Hassan and Hussain, they don't even accept a lot of them as Ahlul Bayt. So it's a very, very exclusive school with very exclusive. Uh, criteria to accept who the family of the Prophet is. Okay, because they always claim that we are the lovers of Ahlul Bayt and we are the followers of Ahlul Bayt. You are the followers of usurpers, oppressors, and those who took the, the, the right of Ali by force from him. So they were the Sahaba and they take all these faults in the Sahaba and they talk about the Sahaba and insult them and curse them in their gatherings. It's an open secret now. It's all over the world. You know, before, previously, people couldn't believe this stuff. Oh, how can they do that? But it's on YouTube now. Jazakumullah khairan for YouTube. Okay? They've, it's done many good things as well as many evil things. Okay? But one of the good things you can find on YouTube is the exposure of a lot of the, the Zanadika and a lot of the people of Bidah. And you can see the faults very clearly, openly. Some of the speakers are preaching hatred against Sahaba. Okay, but we don't do that. We still invite them with love and compassion. Okay, this is our way. Now, the reason why they reject him is because he was on his way to fight against Hisham bin Abdul Malik. Hisham bin Abdul Malik, and Imam Abu Hanifa rahmullah was alive at the time, and he said, "This is the battle of Badr today." Yani Imam Abu Hanifa backed Zaid bin Ali bin Hussein bin Ali against Hisham bin Abdul Malik. And he said, this is the battle of Badr today. Imam Abu Hanifa, and then even later on when the Umayyads went, the Abbasids came to power, he was still supporting the Ahlul Bayt. That's why he was Ahlul Bayt to Imam Abu Hanifa was not Ahlul Bayt to the Shia. His Ahlul Bayt was anyone who comes from the family of Hassan and Hussein. Those are Ahlul Bayt. And from the family of Aqil and the family of Abbas. And if the family of Jafar. So, and you know, inclusive um, view of Ahlul Bayt. Now, when Zaid was going to fight in a battle against Hisham, some of these people from Kufa who used to curse the Sahaba openly and privately, 
they came to Zaid and they said, we will join you. And they joined the army. But then they started cursing Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman and all of that. And Zaid said to them that I do not share your view. Do not curse those people. They were the best people who ever lived on the planet. Some of the best people. So don't curse them. They were the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So don't join my ranks if you're going to do this. And then they turned around these people and they went away and they left him alone in the battlefield. And he was killed in the battle. Zaid bin Ali bin Hussein bin Ali. Is that clear? Okay? Is that clear? He was killed in the battle. And this is why some of these people are called the Rafida. From this, because of this incident. You know, have you, have you come across this word term, Rafida? Yeah? Or Rafzi? In our language? Yeah? Uh, ulama always use this term, yeah? This is why they are called the Rafida, the one who abandons, the one who turns away, or turns his back. Okay? Rafida. That's why they were called that. Okay? And their, the title of cursing the Sahaba, the reason why Zaid split with them was this reason. Okay? So now, for this reason, they say Zaid is not from Ahlul Bayt. He's not one of our Imams. Even Ismail is now not part of the Ahlul Bayt. He's away. So anyone who disagreed with them, in fact, a large number of the children of Ali bin Abi Talib, who came from the descendants of Hussein, they not only reject them, they declare takfir on them. Because they went towards the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and they followed that version.